What up, nerds? My name is Leslie Smith. Welcome to the Nerdy Narrative, and let's talk about the first week of reading for the May the Force Read With You Readathon. That is a readathon I am a co host with Break Even Books and Coffee Over Apples for the month of May. As you can see, I am representing one of my favorite Star Wars t shirts, and I am really having fun with this readathon. Now, if you missed it on Monday, I did put up a May TBR video in which I went over the book that I am planning to read for the readathon. I will link that in the cards as well as the description box below if you would like to check that out. I did declare for the dark side this year and it just really worked out well. Honestly, it was not my dark heart that chose the dark side. It was the books that I had already been looking at reading for the month of May. They just fit right into the prompts like a hand in a glove, so I had to go with it. And talking about videos on the channel, next week stay tuned for my April wrap up as well as my review for the third and final book of Jonathan French's Lotlands. I finally finished reading The Free Bastards. If you're interested in hearing a little bit of an overview about the entire entire series. Do I think it's worth reading after reading that final book? Stay tuned for that next week. And now let's talk about what all I read this week. It just feels natural to start with a favorite author of mine, Zora Neale Hurston. I've been working my way reading through all of her works and Seraph on the Swanee was the book that I read recently. It was really good. It's probably my third favorite piece by her. Well, I would have to actually go back and look at her short stories that I've read and maybe reevaluate. But if we're just talking novels, Their Eyes Were Watching God and Moses Man of the Mountain still come out on top for me. But this one is a very close third. I really enjoyed the story. There is one thing that she did in this story. I did not like how she used this at all. I just do not like the way it was represented at all. I don't agree with it. It stuck with me throughout the entire book because I just kept waiting for it to get addressed and resolved and it didn't. And all of the things that I've read by Zora, that is the first time I disagreed with something that she did and did not like. But the story itself is still a phenomenal story. It is a love story and it is a very authentic and realistic love story. I still love the book, but that one thing just... <clears throat> I never got over it. And while we're talking about Zora, I did also read one of her essays from her nonfiction collection of essays, You Don't Know Us, Negroes and Other Essays. I read the one about Fanny Hurst. Fanny Hurst is another author that Zora knew. They actually went on a two week sort of sightseeing adventure, just really spur of the moment. And the piece centered around how Fanny Hurst was a beautiful woman but she was also an author. And Zora just really focused on how she was both. She was not known for just the one thing. If you just looked at her, you saw her beauty. But if you ever read her work, you saw that she was a hell of an author as well. I am really enjoying this collection for what it is teaching me to not just look at someone for their one, maybe what they're known for. Zora Neale Hurston is a favorite author. I know her as an author, but she was also very well known as an anthropologist. You know, it just made me realize that even though I've never met Zora, I've never laid eyes on her. She's not one dimensional. She was still a person who existed and I just can't get enough of it. And I need to get into more nonfiction like that. So if you guys have read any collections that are just very educational and insightful in that manner that you can drop down in the comments. I would love to hear from you on those. Next up, I read for the Stephen King short story read along. We're in Skeleton Crew. I read Beach World. It was okay. It was okay. It had potential and it was just one of those where Stephen King had a great idea, but he didn't capitalize on it in my opinion. I, I think there's so much more with the creative chops the man had on him. I think he could have done a whole lot more with it. But the moral of the story is sand is bad. 
Sand is bad and I agree with that. I have also on my Kindle been working on David Wiley's collection, A Merchant and Aurea and Other Tales, is a collection of fantasy tales. There have been some that are fantasy that happen in space. There's been a lot of medieval fantasy. There's even been a little bit of a what I would call a portal fantasy. So I'm really enjoying this collection. I think I have two more stories in it and I'll be finished with it and then I will bring you a review on the entire collection and I'll rank the stories for you. And then to round off what all I finished, I did finish Song of Echoes by R.E. Palmer. That is the first book in his newest epic fantasy series. And when I picked it up on Kindle, I did see that book two is available and I believe both of them are available through your Kindle Unlimited subscription if you are subscribed to that service. I have not yet rated it on Goodreads. I haven't written my review. I'm still sorting through how I felt about it. I noticed when I started it, it was only around 430 pages, which I found unusual but exciting in a fantasy story because they generally seem to be 700 to 1,000 pages. And it became very clear to me really quickly that this was a beginning. This was a 430 page beginning. It was very slow pace, a very slow burn, which I wasn't expecting it to be so slow for how short it was. The story is told from two points of view, Elodie and Torin. I was much more interested in Torin's side of things. It did move a little faster, not much on his side than Elodie. Elodie was the political, she's the noble of the story. We had more time pass with her than I feel that we did with Torin. And I'm almost tempted to get the second book and read a few chapters in and just see if it was chopped. For those of you that are avid readers, you've encountered one of your favorite authors at some point where the publisher said, hey, this book is too long. We're going to cut it in half and make it two books. And it's unfortunate, but sometimes you can tell that they just they didn't really rework any of it to make it a good cut. It was just kind of chopped like Jim Butcher, Peace Talks and Battleground. It just was not done well. If you're gonna make the decision to take a book and split it into two, take the time to feather the edges so that you have a complete story in one and then you have the complete story in the other. And that's the other thing with Song of Echoes it wasn't a complete story. Now I understand it's the first book in a series. So you're gonna have an overarching plot, but each book usually also has another plot line or two that starts and gets resolved by the end. So with that one, it's more like you have to rate the series rather than the book, because if I just rate the book, it's gonna have a lower rating by itself because it's not a finished narrative. Like I would have a hard time saying, hey, you need to pick up this book. So that's where I'm at with that one right now. So that covers everything that I finished. What I am still currently working on is The Kingdom of Copper by S.A. Chakraborty. This is the second book in her Devaba trilogy. The first book kind of threw me. I wasn't expecting the romance that was in it at the beginning. The romance very quickly took a back burner and then was snuffed out as that story went on. It got really good. There was a character I became really, really invested in in the end. The ending was surprising. It had so many wonderful things to look forward to seeing how it was going to go in this book. My fingers were just itching for May to roll around so that I could pick this one up. This one has started off to be very political. I feel that this one is playing a game of chess. I'm very interested in seeing how all of the players, what they're gonna do for their long game and their short game. I just read in the last chapter what I think is going to solve a mystery for a character at the end of book one. I think I've discovered what their secret is. I can't wait to see how that's gonna play out. I'm loving it so far. I started it last night. Like I said, I'm already 100 pages in. I can't wait to get done filming so I can get back into it and see what's gonna happen next. I feel like this is going to turn in a favorite series of mine. I do already want to reread it, even though I just started it a few weeks ago. And my goodness, but these covers are just absolutely gorgeous. And its beautiful cover is what led me to choose it 
to satisfy the prompt for the readathon seduction which is choose a book with a beautiful cover while i am enjoying the kingdom of copper and i am eager to get back into its pages i kind of feel the need for some horror i need a little spice in my life so i think i'm going to go ahead and start the exorcist house by nick roberts this is his latest release it will be out the day this video goes live may the 6th from crystal lake publishing when i read the description for this one it was an immediate must read for me my friend jay over at the channel the world according to jay he messaged me and asked me if I had requested the art and if I had read it yet. I said no, but that I was going to. And he told me he read it in one day. That's unusual for Jay. Jay reads like 20 books at a time and it takes him a little bit to get through one. And he said it was so good that he read it in a day. He actually already has a review up, which I will link down below if you want to check that out. By the time you're seeing this, my written review should at least be up on Goodreads. If you want to check it out, I will have a video review coming very soon. I'll let you guys know when to expect that. But this one's going to be amazing. For my horror fans out there, just take a second to listen to this description and tell me if this doesn't sound amazing. In the summer of 1994, psychologist Daniel Hill buys a rustic farmhouse nestled in the rolling hills of West Virginia. Along with his wife Nora and their teenage daughter Alice, the family uproots their lives in Ohio and moves south. At first, they're seduced by the natural beauty of the farm and enjoy the bonding experience of fixing the old house, but that all changes when they discover a hidden room in the basement with a well boarded shut and adorned with crucifixes. Local legends about the previous owner's predilection for performing exorcisms comes to light, but by then all hell has broken loose. I cannot wait to get started on this one. So I feel like I'm going to start that one tonight. Once I finish both of those, the next one I'm going to move into is going to be The Splendid City by Karen Hewler. This one is coming out in June. This is an arc that I got from Angry Robot Books. I had to read this one because it's about a white witch who there's a guy that pissed her off. That was her coworker. She turns him into a cat but he's a talking cat who loves to drink beer, eat fish, tacos, and shoot people. Seriously guys, that one line is what sold me on this book. I had to know more. So I can't wait to read this one and just see if the rest of the book lives up to that one glorious line in the book description. And that's going to do it for me for this week, guys. That's everything that I read, what I'm still working on, what I plan to get into next. How are you guys doing? How's your first week of May? You got your new TBR ahead of you. Those of you that are participating in the readathon, how did your first week treat you? Let me know in those comments down below. Guys, have a fantastic rest of your Friday, a great weekend, and I will catch you in the next one.